Hello and welcome back to Oversteer Auto Reviews. Today I have the 2020 Dodge Durango RT, the all-American but quite German sports utility vehicle. Let's break this car down and complete a review. The front fascia styling on this vehicle is quite aggressive. Up front we will see a lot of vents. This vent right here goes all the way up and feeds the air intake. All the other vents being this one, this one, this one, that one, and this one all shove in cold air to keep the engine bay cool. On the hood you will find two heat extractors. Underneath the hood you will find what is probably the main selling point for this vehicle being the 5.7 liter 345 cubic inch naturally aspirated V8 Hemi. This engine produces 360 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque at 5,150 RPMs. In this all-wheel drive variant, those numbers will get you to 60 in just 6.4 seconds. That is best in class at this price range. Moving on to the Germanness of this vehicle. Now you wouldn't think Dodge, being an American brand, would have any relation with Germany. But here we are. See, this Durango has a chassis which is directly borrowed from the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. It's essentially just a GLE chassis stretched out to accommodate for the size that Dodge wanted to build this vehicle. In addition to that, we have a German-designed ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. That transmission might not sound special until you hear that Rolls-Royce uses it in all of their vehicles. Yes, you heard correctly. Rolls-Royce uses the same transmission in all of their vehicles. Now, while we're talking about the transmission, a non-German part of the vehicle would be the rear differential. That rear differential has a gear ratio of 3.47. That number aids the vehicle in achieving its top speed, which is electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. Since this is a V8, fuel economy is pretty mediocre. In the city, we get 14, and on the freeway, you get 22. All that connected to a 24.6 gallon gas tank. Moving on to the wheels, you will see the 20 by 9 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels. These wheels are wrapped in optional all season performance tires. These wheels are finished in gloss black which come included in the optional black top package. The black top package gives us these black wheels, black badges, and black mirrors. Moving on to the rear of the vehicle, you will immediately notice the LED racetrack inspired taillights. These taillights are what give the Durango its presence, especially at night. On the right, we have the infamous RT badge. On the left, we will have our Durango badge and the four-wheel drive badge. Moving on to the lower portion, we have our trailer hitch cover and dual three-inch exhaust tips. At first, you wouldn't think that the Durango has a spare tire until you come look underneath and see there's a full-size spare. In the trunk, the Durango also has a nice hidden compartment spot for you to hide your things. In terms of secret compartments, this one's pretty big. The specific Durango also comes with the Cargo Plus group, which gives us these two black colored roof rails, along with our cargo cover over here, which goes in like so. So when this trunk lid closes, we cannot see anything below very nice so here we are again in the trunk of the Dodge Durango let me give you a trunk test uh. yeah it's really tight in here but I think I can in the Durango you won't find any button over here to electronically close the trunk. In fact, it's replaced to over here. Since the Durango is a three row crossover, I wanted to start off in the third row. Sitting normally as an individual who is five foot 11, I have about three inches of knee room and about four inches of headroom. That is quite exceptional. I believe that the Durango, in terms of third row comfort, beats most full-size SUVs. Keep in mind that this is mid-size, not full-size. In terms of utilities, we're not bad either. We have two cup holders, two air vents, two lights, 
and two speakers. That's pretty good. Moving on to the second row, the Durango does not disappoint at all. Again, I'm 5'11", and I have the front seat positioned to the way I'd be sitting if I was there. I have about 6 inches of knee room and about 6 inches of head room. That's crazy to think about because in the third row, I had exceptional head and knee room, and in the second row, it just gets even better. On top of that, we have the upgraded leather seats finished in demonic red, and these seats have the Dodge logo embroidered into them. Aside from that, the seat also reclines like so. It's very nice. Second row utilities are very good too. Here we have two more air vents, two more lights, and over here we have a climate control system. On the lower portion of the second row, we have a home style outlet, two USB-A ports, two heated seat controls, and two more vents. Alongside that, we have a netted basket and large cup holders on both sides. This Durango has the captain's chair feature, which eliminates the bench seat and gives us two separate chairs with two separate armrests. One thing that it does not have is the large center console option, but in my opinion, it makes getting into the third row a bit harder. But speaking of getting into the third row, these seats do fold down. All you have to do is pull the latch up, fold it down. Here, you will find a red strap, pull that all the way up, and voila, you have a clear pathway into the third row. Very nice. So here we are in the driver's seat, and I'm gonna start off with the seat controls. This seat moves forward, backwards, up, and down. On top of that, this part of the seat goes up and down to provide thigh support. Sadly, there's no powered seat control for the headrest. That is manual. Here, this is our lumbar support control, and I've got to say, it really provides some good support. This car also has the 6.4 inch Uconnect display system. It works really well, and if you'd like me to do an in-depth review on this, let me know in the comments below. This Durango also has the optional technology group, which gives us adaptive cruise control, advanced brake assist, full speed collision warning, and lane departure warning. The adaptive cruise control has a sensor, which is in the front fascia, which looks like so. In this Durango, we also have the pedal shifters with the shiftable eight speed automatic. But the thing is that these are quite flimsy in terms of pedal shifters. They, they work, but I don't know. Dodge could have done better. What I didn't quite get about the Durango is why did they put the traction control off right next to the sport button? Hmm. This Durango also has the optional power sunroof, which is powered by three buttons right here. This is to open. This is to close. This is to vent. And this car is going crazy because I have the ignition on. This Durango also has the upgraded sound system, which gives us a 19 speaker Harman Kardon full stereo system with a subwoofer as well. Let me demonstrate that for you. Another feature on this Durango is remote start. All I have to do is hit this button twice.
45 miles per hour. That is the complete review on the 2020 Dodge Durango RT. The base price for this vehicle is $44,395. This specific vehicle has been optioned out to around $58,000. In my opinion, if you're getting a V8 under the hood in a vehicle that can tow 7,400 pounds, that price is a bargain. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time.